Okay, for our next fly, we're going to be doing a fly that I refer to as the wiggle bug. And this is a pattern that I use, uh, in, again, in a lot of different applications, but it's primarily a real shallow water fly. It's a pattern that when the fish are laid up in real skinny water um, and maybe real bright, clear, sunny conditions when they're real spooky, you want a fly that you can throw in that'll land soft. Uh, and again, something that you can, you can fish at a constant depth. So just with the materials that we've incorporated in this fly, uh, it allows you to do that. Um, also, if the fish are maybe in open water and they're suspended, uh, and you need to keep the fly at a constant depth to keep it in their, their sight line for a longer period of time, this is a great pattern to do that. Uh, basically, what we've got here is uh, this shellback, if you will, and the, and the tail with the V, these little uh, wiggly parts at the rear of the hook, uh, is done out of bug skin material. And then we just do a dubbed body with some squirrel dubbing and uh, another soft tackle type, uh, similar to what we did on the last one, but we'll, we'll palmer that through the thorax just to get a little bit more mass of hackle up there. We won't do any weight or a bead on this. Sometimes I will do it with just a little bit of lead wire in there, uh, but typically unweighted because this is something that we want, the neutral buoyancy in a fly that sinks real slow and stays at a constant depth. So let me go ahead and put a hook in the vise and we'll get started on this one. The hook that I typically use for this particular pattern is a, a 3x long nymph hook uh, with a curved shank and sizes on this uh, up as large as size 8s uh, but down as small as 16s or 18s if you're fishing real skinny water and again we'll just match our thread color uh, again I'm working with ultra thread in a 70 denier uh, again it's about a 6 aught size thread and I'll just match my thread color to the, the rest of the, the body colors uh, we're going to do this in again more of a rust shade and uh, again, the color variety can be, you can do black, you can do olive. Most of these flies that we're working with and we're throwing at these carp are more earth tone colors. Um, for my ribbing material, I'm going to work with this, this nylon or monofilament tying thread. Uh, it gives you great durability. Um, I, I'm trying not to put a lot of flash in this, so I stay away from wire or using crystal flash or flashaboo. Um, if it's real dirty water situation, you can incorporate a little bit of that into the fly. But for ribbing on this one, we'll just use this, this monofilament thread. So we'll tie that in and we'll basically just like you're tying a piece of wire in. And I like to leave that hooked up on a bobbin uh, just so you can have a little more control when you're wrapping. Now for our body, we're going to work with um, some squirrel dubbing. And this is a, an SLF squirrel dubbing. Um, it's, it's blended with SLF uh, synthetic living fiber dubbing and uh, squirrel, um, so it's a real buggy, uh, kind of spiky dubbing material. Uh, there's a lot of good colors available in this that are, that are those earth tone colors for what we're trying to do with many of these cart patterns. And we'll dub this, uh, again, just a, a slight taper, similar to what we did on the previous fly. And this doesn't necessarily need to be dubbed real tight. Um, I, I like a little spikier body on this. If we can create a little bit more mass and have some, some guard hairs and some things sticking out, uh, again, it helps the fly land a little bit softer and, and gives you a little bit better presentation quality when you're actually fishing the fly. Now I'm going to dub this up and come just a little bit beyond the midpoint of the hook. And then at that point, we'll, we'll tie in our next material, which is going to be our hackle feather. I'm going to add just a little bit more dubbing. Reposition my hook there. One little more addition of dubbing just to complete that body and get us up on the hook where we need to be. And again, when I'm fishing this with the, those little wiggly tails that we'll have sticking off the back of the hook, um, you can fish this real slow and real deliberate, and you'll end up uh, getting a lot of movement out of the fly. Now for our hackle feather, we're going to work with, again, this is one of the Hebert uh, hen uh, capes. This is a hen uh, neck, and again, it's a, a, not quite as webby as the hen saddle that we used on the previous fly, so the hackle will tend to open up a little bit more when we wind it on the hook. This is just kind of a, a gingery brown color, um, almost kind of a furnace, uh, but again, you can use any type of, of just darker uh, feather that's going to match fairly close to the body color. And to prepare this, we'll, similar to what we did on the previous fly, we'll take and strip the, the soft web off the base of the feather. And rather than tying this in by the tip like you would for a soft tackle, we'll tie this in uh, by the butt. We'll actually work with the heavier part of the, the stem down here. So we'll trim that off, pull a few of the fibers out to the side, and just trim those and leave some little um, feelers sticking out on each side of that stem so that the thread's got something to grab a hold of a little bit tighter. And then we'll set this in and tie it in on the near side of the hook, just in front of our, 
our dubbed body that we put onto the abdomen of the fly. Then at this point we'll go back to our squirrel dubbing and we're going to dub a thorax that's just slightly thicker or bigger in diameter than the abdomen of the fly. And I want this again to be a little bit looser so we get some of the, the spikiness and that bugginess of the squirrel guard hairs. <clears throat> so we'll load the thread up just a little bit heavier this time than what we did on the, on the, the abdomen or the first part of the body. And as I wind this forward I'll I'll start a little bit thicker right where the, the hackle feathers tied in and then just a little bit of a gradual taper. I'm going to back up and just tighten that a little bit. And just a gradual taper as we work up here towards the eye. And I'm going to leave about an eye's length of bare hook shank right in here so I've got room to tie on that shell back of bug skin. Uh, we want to make sure that we don't crowd too close to the eye on this. Now we can come in with our hackle pliers and we'll grab a hold of our feather and go ahead and palmer this up through the thorax. And basically treating this just like you would a soft tackle as we wind around each time we come over the top of the hook I'm going to take and just fold that. So I'll take one full turn right where the two body parts meet. And we're looking at probably three or four wraps to work up through this. Um, again you can certainly if, if you're fishing real clear water conditions and you want a fly that's got a little more cushion on the front of it so when it lands uh, you can certainly load it up with a little bit more hackle. Uh, if, if you're trying to improve the sink rate a little bit, you can, can just back off on the number of turns of hackle so it's, there's not quite as much mass up there and it'll help with the sink rate. Go ahead and tie that off. Yep. Release our hackle pliers there and then we'll come in and trim off the tip of that feather. At this point I'm just going to pull the hackle back, just make a couple tight wraps there and now we're ready to, to put our shell back on. And again, for the shell back, we're going to work with some bug skin material. Uh, this is like a synthetic chamois material. And it'll, it stays pliable even after it's dried out, after you've fished it. Um, so it's a good durable material. And again, when it gets wet, it gets kind of slimy and, and, and really has a lot of movement to it. Uh, it has some real soft characteristics. So it works very good for the application that we're going to use it in. I've already prepared a piece that I've trimmed off of here. Uh, basically, what I start with is just a, a tapered um, long tapered piece and the narrow end up here is where we'll tie in at the eye of the hook. Uh, once we get it tied in then we'll come in and, and trim that V out of the back of it to create those two little feelers or wigglers. Uh, so again something that you can prep before you sit down to tie a bunch of these. <clears throat> and I am going to come in and just taper the front of that just a little bit with my scissors just to have a little bit cleaner tie in point and I'm going to tie that in right up here. Just compress it right on top of the body take a loose turn of thread to capture that and get it right behind the eye of the hook. And again, this is why it's important to leave a little bit of extra space right there behind the eye because we want to make sure that we get that tied in good and tight at the front of the hook. Now to bind it down to the, the rest of the body, we'll come in with the, the monofilament thread, that we, the first thing that we tied on the hook, and I'm going to stretch that material back. We can kind of take and pull our legs forward a little bit for right now while we wind forward up the body. And I'm going to rotate the bug skin towards me just a little bit to just compensate or overcompensate for what the, the monofilament thread is going to do when I take my first turn. And I'll hold on to that and actually keep a little tension. I'm pulling back here away from the vise to help keep that centered right up on top of the hook. And with the mono thread you can, you can really crank on this stuff and bind it down good and tight to the hook shank. And I'll just kind of follow that up with my fingers to make sure that that shell back doesn't twist over to one side. Now I've reached the point where I'm right behind where I tied the hackle in and we can use this to, to help secure the hackle as well so that if the stem were to break um, it won't unwind and, and fall apart. So we'll kind of wiggle that monofilament thread up into the middle of the hackle and we'll take one turn kind of through the thorax which will give it a segment but it, we've also crossed over uh, some wraps of that hackle to help secure it to the dubbing. And then we'll jump forward up here to the head and then we can go ahead and tie this off. We get two or three tight turns on it, come in with our scissors, trim off the excess, clean up the head with a couple more wraps of thread, and then we'll go into our whip finish here. Once we've got the knot on there, then we can go ahead and trim the, the tail of the fly and get that little V or those little, little feelers back there. 
complete our whip finish, go ahead and remove our thread here, and trim that off. And then to do the tail portion of this, I'm going to come back here about a hook length um, from where it's tied in and just pull it taut but not really stretch it real tight. Trim that off. And then we'll come in with our scissors and we'll just trim basically a long V in here. So I'll start right at the corner of that square edge that I just cut. Make one cut, come in on the other side, make another cut. We need to go in right in the center of that with our scissors. And again, this is something if you're going to be doing a bunch of these, you can kind of pre trim these um, prior to sitting down at the vise. I'm just going to recut this just a little bit, just to go a little bit deeper. The longer that you cut those, this V out of there, uh, the more movement that you'll get from those two little feelers at the back of the fly. I've got one more little piece to remove there. I'm just going to rotate the vise so I can get to the underside of this to remove that one little piece out of there. Okay, and then our final step on this will be just to add a little bit of head cement to help secure that head. So we'll take a small drop of that and apply that right up at the head of the fly. And there's our finished wiggle bug. Um, again, a great shallow water pattern for carp. Um, certainly a fly that you can, um, you know, fish in a variety of different situations, but it's great to use it in, uh, again, shallow water or if fish are suspended and you're trying to keep the fly in front of the fish for a longer period of time. Uh, this, this would be my first choice or one of my favorite flies for that situation. Mm -hmm.